Welcome back to a new episode where we will be creating a footer that will be stuck at the bottom of our page. Normally, a footer includes important information such as copyright, disclaimer, a few links to relevant resources, and a way how users can get in touch with you. As we've talked about it in the previous episodes, most web pages are structured the same way. They almost always have a header, so let me go to the browser. They always have a header with the logo on the left and navigation links to the right. The body has all the website content inside of it. And there is a footer which is always at the bottom of the page. And you should see a footer as information that will appear at the bottom of every single page on your website. So whenever we are redirecting to about, portfolio or contact, the footer will always be there. Or whenever a user is scrolling through your website and he's well at the my video section, the user does not want to scroll up to navigate through the header links. But having a footer makes it a lot easier for users because they can navigate in the footer as well. What I want to create for the footer is a grid layout of four divs. The first div will have a logo with the company name below it. The second div will be the internal links that users can choose from. The third div will be the way how users can get in touch with you. And the last div is something that we haven't talked about and that is using an input field where users can register for a newsletter. So let's go to our index.html and let's go right above our closing body tag where we want to create opening and closing footer tags. Let's hit tab, let's hit enter. And I also want to give my footer an ID. I want to set it equal to grid-footer. Now the tricky parts comes here. We want our footer to be 100% width, but the content inside of it needs to be 80%, just like the rest of our page. What we need to do is to create a new div with a class of content-footer. Let's hit tab and enter. So the footer will have a width of 100% and the content inside of it will have a 80% width. Inside the footer, let's create our first div. And inside the first div, well, I want to add my logo so we can actually scroll up and we can copy it from the header. Let's scroll down again. Let's paste it right here. And I want to add a piece of text right below my logo. So I want to write down in H4 tags, Nazar Web Agency. Let's save it. Let's refresh the browser. And well, this doesn't look good right now. So let's continue on. Now that the first grid is done, let's create a new grid. So let's write down div. And what I want to add here are the internal links of the web page. So let's write down H4, hit tab, and let's write down internal links. Right below our internal links, we need to create an unordered list and list items because we want to add, well, all the navigations that we have in our header. But what we could do is to scroll up and let's copy our unordered list and all the list items inside of it, of course. And let's paste it right below our H4. And we can remove our active class because we don't want that in the footer. Now our second div is done. So let's go right below our closing div. Let's create a new one. Inside the third div, I want to create all the possible ways how someone could get in touch with me. Once again, let's write down H4, hit tab. And let's write down get in touch in between our h4 tags. We want the possibilities how someone can get in touch to be inside an unordered list. And we want a list item. We also want our list items to be clickable. So let's write down A and hit tab. In between the answer, let's write down the company name that you have. And let's also create the href right now. So my website is https colon forward slash forward slash www.darinazar.com and I want to set the target equal to underscore blank because I want a page to be opened on a new tab since I don't want my potential customers to leave my website whenever they click on it. We could actually copy our list item, paste it right below of it. And let's change the text in between to my address. And you could actually write down your own address. But what I want to do right now is to go to Google. 
just search for your address. I will just write down New York. I will click on Maps. And what we need to do right now is just to copy the URL, go back to our index.html and paste it right inside of our href. And the target needs to be equal to blank as well. The next list item that I want to add, well, we can copy paste the first one again. And I want the third one to be my phone number. So let's write that down. And for the phone number, you actually do not need to create a new URL in the href because it's a little bit different. To create a phone number, we need to remove whatever is inside the double quotes. We need to write down tell, colon, plus, followed by your country code. I'm in the Netherlands, so it's 31. And followed by your phone number. I will add a dummy phone number because, well, I actually won't show you mine. So let's save it. And whenever someone clicks on the phone number right now, or my phone number text, he will be getting a pop-up on his phone if he wants to make a phone call or not. The last link that I want to add is, well, let's copy paste it one more time. Let's remove whatever is inside the href. And let's replace the text in between the answers with my email. Well, the href of an email is pretty similar to the phone number. And instead of writing down tell, we need to write down mail to, followed by a colon, your email address. So my email address is info at darinazar.com. A pretty cool feature that you could add is a subject. And the way you do that is by writing down a question mark right after your email, followed by subject with a capital S. And we need to set it equal to whatever you want. But if you want to create a one word subject, so let's say development, this works. But if you want to use more than one word, there is a problem because the href does not accept spaces. Luckily, they came with a solution. And instead of writing down spaces, you need to write down a percentage sign, followed by 20, well, followed by the word that you want to add. So let's say development website. The percentage 20 will be replaced with a space. Now that we've done with the contact div, we need to create one more. So let's go outside of the closing div. Let's create a new one. We also need a title for this one. So let's write down H4, hit tab, write down stay connected. What I want to create right here is an input field where users can input their email address and the placeholder that will provide us with some sort of information. And do not worry about this section. I will create a separate video focused on contact forms and input fields. Now let's write down input and hit tab. And you can see that the type attribute is automatically created. And what we need to do is to change it to email because we want our keyboard of a phone user to change to an email format. Right below our input, we need a button and the text in between is sign up. I also want to add the icon to the right of it. So let's go to the browser, write down fontawesome.com. Let's search for write. Let's click on free. Well, something went wrong right here. Let's click on free. And I actually want the carrot right. So let's click on it. Let's copy it. And let's place it right after sign up. I also want to add my social buttons right here. Right below our button, let's create an unordered list and a list item. And we also want our social icons to be clickable. So let's write down A, hit tab. And let's go back to font awesome again. And the first one that I want to add is Facebook. Let's search for it. Let's click on, well, which one you want. Let's copy it and let's paste it right inside the answer. We can actually copy paste our list item two more times because the second one that I want is Instagram. Let's search for it. Let's copy, well, let's click on it and let's copy the I class. Let's replace the second I class. And the third one that I want to add is LinkedIn. 
let's search for it and let's click on the well second one let's copy the i class and let's paste it right inside of the well re let's replace it now let's save it let's go back to our project but let's refresh it and well the output isn't that great but we will be working on that right now so let's go to our style sheet let me add a comment because we're going to style our footer. The first thing that I want to style is the hashtag Brit-Footer ID. I want to set the width inside of this to 100%. I want to add a box shadow of 0 pixels, 0 pixels, 10 pixels and the color is black. Just like the rest of our page. And I want to add a margin because, well... If we scroll up right now, you can see that the image is placed right beneath the video. So let's add a margin of 80 pixels top and the rest is zero. What I want to do now is to apply my grid to my footer. So let's write down punctuation mark content dash footer. We need to set the display equal to grid. And I want to add a four column grid. So let's write down grid dash template dash columns. And I set it equal to one fraction, one fraction, one fraction, and 1.4 fraction. Because I want the fourth one to be a little bit bigger. I also need a grid gap of 3 EM. And I want the footer to be a little bit longer. So we need to add padding of, well, on the line below, of 80 pixels top and bottom and zero left and right. Since the wall footer is 80%, I want to create white space to the left and to the right. So we need to set the width equal to 80%, but we need to set the margin equal to zero auto as well. So let's save it and let's refresh the browser. Well, you won't see anything right now because our image is too big. So right below content footer, let's write down punctuation mark content dash footer again, space IMG. And I set the width equal to 40 pixels. Save it. Refresh the browser. And you can see that our grid layout is applied right now. So the next thing that I want to do is to style all the links. So let's copy content footer IMG. Let's paste it right below of it. And let's change IMG to enter. So an A. And everything that's inside of it. The first thing that we need to do right here is to set the text decoration to none. And I want to change the color because I don't like the blue color to black. Well, let's also add a hover effect. So let's copy our content footer. Let's place it right below. And right after the answer, let's write down colon hover. We don't need the text decoration. And we need to change the color to gray, just like in the header to 666666 and we want to add a transition of 0 0.25 seconds and we want it to ease in. Save it, refresh the browser and this looks good but right now I want to style the unordered list so let's copy the content footer A and let's change the A with an unordered list so UL and I want the list style to be none and I want the margin to be not zero and I want the padding to be zero. Save it, let's refresh the browser and it actually starts to look pretty good. But I want to create a little bit more white space around my links. So let's go to our style sheet, copy our content footer, paste it and after the unordered list, let's add a list item. We don't need our list style and margin, but we do need our padding. The top is zero, the right is zero as well. The bottom needs to be eight pixels and the left is zero. Save it, refresh the browser, and this looks better. Now I actually forgot to do something because I want to add a class to the input field. So let's go to our index and right inside the input type email, let's create a class and let's set it equal to input dash newsletter. Save it. Let's go back to the style sheet and let's style it. So let's say punctuation mark input dash newsletter where the width 
of the input field is 140 pixels and the height is 30 pixels. Save it, refresh the browser, and this looks good. But what I want is set the display equal to inline block. So whenever someone on a small device opens it, I want the button to be next to the input field. I also want to add the border because I want the color to be one pixels solid and black. And I want to create a box shadow of zero pixels, zero pixels, 10 pixels, and the color is black as well. Save it, refresh the browser, and the color went wrong. Let's test it out one more time, and this looks better. We also need to create a class for a button. So right after button, let's write down class and set it equal to submit dash newsletter. Let's go back to our style sheet and we can actually copy our input newsletter and we can change the input to submit newsletter. We don't want the width to be just like this. Well, I can actually show you how it looks. So let's save it, refresh it. Well, this is not what we want. So let's set the width equal to 100 pixels and the height to 35. I will also want a little bit more space between the input field and the button. So let's set the margin equal to 0 pixels, 0 pixels, 0 pixels and 10 pixels left. I want the background color to be black. But I want the foreground color, so the text color, to be white. And I want the font size to be a little bit bigger. So let's say 16 pixels and the text transform. Well, let me scroll down a little bit. It's uppercase. And we don't need the display inline block. So let's save it. Let's refresh it. And this is what we want. Well, we actually forgot to create a placeholder. So let's go to our index.html. And right after input type email, let's write down placeholder. And let's set it equal to enter email. Save it refresh it and right now you can see that we created a placeholder for our input field. The last thing that I want to style are the social buttons. The problem that we have right now is that we cannot style the list items of these social buttons because we already styled an other unordered list and list items inside the footer. So we need to go back to our index.html and in our unordered list let's create a class and set it equal to social-footer. Save it. Let's go back to our style sheet. And right below submit letter, let's write down punctuation mark social dash footer. But we want to style the list items because the styling of the footer unordered list is already done. And this is applied to the social footer as well. And what we want to say is that the display is equal to inline because we want the icons to be aligned next to each other and not right below each other. So let's save it and check it out. This looks good. And the last thing that I want to do is to style the icons. And if we go back to our index.html, you can see that the I class are all fab. So that's pretty easy for us. So let's copy our social footer list item. Let's paste it. And let's change list item to punctuation mark fab. I want to set the font size equal to 28 pixels and I want to add a padding of 20 pixels top because it's well aligned to the input bottom now. 10 pixels to the right, 0 bottom, 0 left. Save it, refresh the browser and this looks good. And we need to create a global styling for our H4. So let's go to the top and right below our H3, let's create an H4 styling. And let's set the font size equal to 24 pixels and the text transform to uppercase. Save it. Check it out in the browser. And while well, this is a little bit too big, so let's set it equal to 18 pixels. This looks better. This was it for this episode. And in the next episode, I want to show you how you could easily add a WhatsApp click to a chat. So whenever we click on a button right here, that says redirect me to WhatsApp, we will be redirected to a WhatsApp chat. If you do enjoy my content and you want to see more, 
Leave this video a thumbs up and if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.